Hello, Joe. Um, Hello, Patrick. I'm here at your house in North London, mm -hmm. and I cannot tell you how happy I am because uh, you just let me know um, very recently that you had been successful in the chase yes. and that you with your team had won a very large amount of money and that you had decided to donate it to the Sustainable Food Trust. I can't tell you how thrilled we were when we heard that you news. See, I thought I was only going to get like maybe a thousand. I thought maybe. But, you know, we just kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger through the show. Woohoo! <laughs> and then at the end, it was like, oh my God, we've all got 30,000 each for our charities. Brilliant. And was there a particularly strong member of the team? Well, the strongest character was definitely Jonathan Ross. He was mad as a hatter and he went for the highest amount possible, whereas I was very, you know, for, it was my first ever quiz show. You I must have been nervous, nervous then. Yeah, I was a bit nervous. But what made it better is that I know, knew, know the host, Bradley. Um, I know Chris Hollins I did Strictly Come Dancing with. Yeah. And Katie Brand I did MasterChef with. And I've known Jonathan Ross for years. So that made me not so worried. But I didn't think I was going to go further than the first little bit. I thought I'd be knocked out. But So when I got all my questions right and was sent back to the panel. Oh my God, it was great. <laughs> so you didn't disgrace yourself at all, actually, did no, you? No, my, actually, my eldest son said, Mum, don't do it, don't do it. It's going to be embarrassing. You're not going to get a question right. So when I came home, I rang you up. I said, oh, Jamie, it was so embarrassing. I didn't get one thing right. He said, I knew it, I knew it. Anyway, I did. So, Joe, I want to know what first got you interested in food issues. Uh, yeah, it was because I was misdiagnosed back in 1990 with Crohn's disease. And so I spent two years on steroids and, um, and I felt like I was trapped, you know, and I, they took my soul away. And I couldn't imagine that I was going to live like this on pills for the rest of my life. And I got this letter from, I did something and something came out in the paper, it said, Stone's wife in incurable disease. But through that, I got hundreds of pieces of mail, loads and loads of letters, uh, people with Crohn's disease saying how what they'd been through. And there was this one letter, and it came from this guy called Gerald Green, who was a naturopath and a um, herbalist. He said, come see me, I'll put your, stone, uh, your Crohn's disease into remission for life. I live in Hastings and I went down to his house in his little house that said Shangri-La and it, that day changed my life. He sat me down and he said, what do you eat? Kentucky Fried Chicken on a Saturday night and da da da. And he re-educated me. Well, what was, the, what, was, what was the key thing that he said to you that made it, that turned it for you? He talked about the chemicals on the food. Mm. And it was the first time I'd ever heard anybody say that there was chemicals on the food and he said those chemicals will break down your immune system and whatever's your weakest thing in your body it that will become the illness and I thought chemicals on the food why ever would anybody do that why can't we just eat food like nature made it um uh and I went out of out there I started growing my own potatoes in Ireland uh, I became completely obsessed. I read stuff. I wanted to know everything about what they were doing. And, and the more I learnt, the more horrified I was. But you've been on the campaign in like a crusade almost to get more people to think about this for a long yeah. time. Uh, how, how, you, how have you got on? Have you had some successes? And you know, how much have you been, like people that you know, but also the wider public. I mean, we've got a long way to go, haven't we? God, I get so disheartened, actually, a lot of the time, because I think it's like, even take, for instance, I went to a party the other night, a, a beautiful home, big house, very successful, food on the, all on the table. And I looked at the table, number one, I didn't see anything green, and, and it was all awful food. Krispy Kreme, donuts, things full of um, corn syrup and I just 
was dismayed and I thought, he is an educated man and he's feeding himself this food. This is crazy. I have changed people's ways. I have changed Kate Moss. She's all organic now. Really? Yes. And that was, that was one of your personal successes. Yeah, Keith Great. Richards. Uh, I don't know if Mick is, uh, Mick is a, a healthy eater, but I don't think he, I don't know if he knows about the, um, you know, if he's He rising. came, through you, he came to one of our events when I was at the Soul Association. He came to that big feast thing we had. So, oh. you know, I think you had an influence yeah. on him. Um, so I've, I've influenced a lot of people, um, maybe because I will drive them mad, and then I'll go to dinner at somebody and say, Joe, don't worry, everything tonight's organic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so there are some people, but there's, it's such a small percentage of people that um, it's quite disheartening, really. It is, and maybe we'll come back to that, but I want to know what you eat, Joe. how you changed your diet in response to all this. Luckily, I have Whole Foods around the corner. Uh, your daughter plants my garden of veg for vegetables. Uh, in the summer, I'm in heaven because I just go out to my garden and I pick my dinner. But in the morning, I eat things like um, kefir, you know, uh, that really good yogurt, uh, um, uh, fruit. I, I like the, the super foods like maca powder and hemp seed and chai seeds and all that sort of thing you know I, and i i make all my food myself i always love to cook so how much of your food actually do you buy from mainstream supermarkets very little so that's interesting isn't it because i think it, i don't know what the statistic is it's like 80 or 90 percent of all the food that is eaten in this country is bought in the main supermarkets but you don't think i, I will go to whole foods that's where i'll go but I'll only buy, if they haven't got something I want that's organic, I won't bother with it at all. So I'll just buy organic. And Riverford, I get Riverford. They are great. They deliver me things like beautiful, dirty carrots and pumpkins and things like that, that I just feel like they've just come straight off the farm. So what's stopping more people buying good food, sustainably produced food, organic food? Is it ignorance about the issues or is it price? I think it's a bit of both actually. I think they don't know about the issues, do they? They don't know what the food they're eating is doing to them because who's telling them? Yeah. Nobody's telling them. Unless they bump into me, they won't know, or you. <laughs> um, and the price, but I, I believe that you can make a really cheap meal from, from just a few things. Yeah. You know, but no, they're no longer doing cookery classes at school. Yeah, that's so that's, another thing. that's a big thing, isn't yeah. it? To get children to be educated about this when they're at school. Because if you start with children, then they grow up and they, they get their parents involved as well. Because they, if they understand the issues, then they're like pester power, aren't they? they can sort of and the yeah. other thing is, is the TV. You watch all those cooking shows and they all use uh, um, white flour, white sugar, uh, they use all the bad ingredients. Nobody's out there saying, swap your this for this, or, you know, that, there's, that's, so all cooking shows, are they're cooking rubbish, and with creams and fattening foods and full of sugars and, oh my God, salt and everything. And I think to myself, what are they doing? That The people that are sitting watching it are making that food and, you know. So we need to get onto the celebrity chefs, perhaps. Well, I did MasterChef. Yes, I know. And I thought I was going to be able to do a little something there, but the bits I talked about the importance of food, they edited out. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you think that was... I was you know, so a bit upset about that. Well, it's quite interesting that they did that, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder why, because it, it's almost as if they don't want... it. If you start talking about sustainable organic food as being better, then it casts a shadow over all the stuff that most people are eating all the time. So they're yeah. interested in getting mainstream coverage, so they don't want to be controversial, which is quite interesting, isn't it? It's, it's really, really a difficult, difficult... The food industry, the health industry... Uh, the food industry don't care about your health and the health industry don't care about your food. It's a real difficult problem, but people are so ill because of the food they're eating. 
And, and there's, you know, there's nothing to do with, let's take a pill for this and a pill for that. They just need to change their diet and they can become healthy. You know, we never had cancers in children no. like we do now. And I know so many women that have got breast cancer. You know, it's just ridiculous. Well, and it's all about the food. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of those issues because antibiotics is one big issue, isn't it? We all are taking antibiotics. Children, apparently, they have five or six courses before they're age five or six years old. And apparently, the average 18-year-old in America has had 20 courses of antibiotics. Really? So uh, that's changing our stomach flora. Yeah. And, you know, it's, your flora in your stomach is the most important thing. Yeah, um, without that... You will be, you'll get it, you, you know, you'll get everything. <laughs> I saw a great program, a little boy had really bad asthma. He was only three and he was coughing, coughing, coughing. And they did a, a test on his flora and his stomach and he had zero. Yeah. A little fella like that and he had, and he had antibiotics before he was six months old. Yes, well the clue's in the name, isn't it? Anti. Biotics. It and kills yes, off the of bacteria. Of course, yes, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> and the thing is that we need those bacteria to digest our food. And now there is evidence to show that, pe that children particularly who take antibiotics, it does lead directly to allergies. And they're even linking it with obesity now. Yeah. I mean, that's what they do to the chickens. They take the flora out of their stomach. And that so, makes them put on more weight. And that makes them put on weight. And that's what's happening with the kids. Well, with everybody, really. I think that's right. I think it's, it's almost as if now the science is beginning to catch up with what we're seeing all around us, but no one's made the connection until now. And there's so many doctors and there's so many people out there that still think giving a pill is better. Yeah. Um, so the other thing that drives me crazy is the genetically modified food. I mean, I think that's absolutely awful to try the whole thought of them 85 percent of all corn grown in america is genetically modified and the fact that they turn a corn into its own pesticide and kills everything in the soil and all around it 85 percent of that land is going to go because the soil is going to be dead well i th i think you make an interesting point that all the first generation of genetically modified crops are either producing a poison inside them, that's the BT corn, yeah. or they're genetically engineered to have another poison, that's the Roundup, sprayed on the them round and they up, don't die. The Roundup, that's the other thing, is awful, that Roundup. <gasps> and do you know how much they, they spray on um, your lawns and the gardens and everything? You know, we're just poisoning ourselves. I think... I think you put your finger on it, Joe. You've identified the key issue. It's people needing to know more about what's wrong with their food. That is the key to getting the food systems we need rather than these industrial food systems which are making everybody uh, sick at the moment. Yeah. So what we need to do is educate people. So yeah. we thought the best way to use the money that you've generously donated to us mm. is to spend it on some films educational films which explain what's wrong with the food we're eating at the moment and how it could yeah. be different. Yes, I agree. And I think, by actually, by doing film is the way you can get across to people, uh, and a, a, a large amount of people as well. Well, we will do our very best to spend the money that you've given us on that, and maybe we can do something rather interesting. Maybe we could go shopping together or something yes. like that and yes. buy some food and see, see where the best places to buy food are and make sure that we buy food with a good story and then people can watch that and kind of conclude the best way for them to shop for themselves. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And we'll start let's, with children. Yeah, um, let's hit the supermarkets and see which one comes out best with the story and organic and, and who comes out worse. That would be a great thing to do. Yeah. So we've got a deal. And thank you again. I mean, it's really, it's, it's not just the fact you've given us the money. It's the fact that so many people are following you and they're interested in what you think about food and you're passionate and knowledgeable and people will take notice of what you say. So thank you. That's a real pleasure. Hey, we've got to change the world.